Although it seems like a simple task, it's sometimes quite complicated trying to work out which version of a peer reviewed journal article you're allowed to share under open access restrictions. This version will of course vary depending on the publisher you're dealing with. This short video is going to outline some of the common life cycle elements of a manuscript and the main characteristics of each iteration to give you a better idea of what you're being asked for. Remember that this is general guidance only and you should always check specific funder and publisher definitions before sharing. A manuscript will go through several drafts long before you're ever ready to let anyone else see it. These drafts are personal to you and will undergo many changes before you feel that you're finished. Normally, these drafts aren't formatted in any particular way for publication, as they're working documents that you intend to adapt. Once you're happy with your draft, you'll submit it to your chosen publisher. Although this might be the fifth or even sixth version you've written, it will be the first seen by a prospective publisher for consideration. This version might be formatted according to specific journal instructions or left as a plain text document, depending on what the publisher specifies. This submitted version is sometimes known as a preprint, which can also be uploaded to a site such as Archive for comments from the community which are aimed at improving it before a formal submission. The crucial characteristic to remember with this version is that it hasn't undergone any type of formal peer review for accuracy or general critique. Peer review is an important aspect of the academic publishing process, which acts as a quality control mechanism for research. When publishing in an academic journal, the submitted version is sent to experts in the field to assess things like the topic covered, its writing style, and its suitability for publication in the journal. Reviewers may suggest anything from minor to substantial changes which need to be made prior to them agreeing to publish the manuscript, and these will need to be addressed in any future drafts. There might be many cycles of peer review for one article, which can slow down the overall publication process. Once the journal's reviewers and editors are happy with the contents of the manuscript, they'll accept it for publication. At this point, it's likely to still be in its original format, such as a Word or LaTeX document. This is known as the author accepted manuscript and is the version most often shared via the green open access route, although of course different journals do have different rules. The characteristic, which means this is the most commonly shared version, is that although it might look like a plain text document, it contains the same content as the final published version and has been through the peer review process, meaning that the journal is happy to share it with their audience. Once a manuscript has been accepted, but prior to its publication, most publishers will send the author a final proof version for them to review. This will look very much like the finished article, but might still contain some queries and notes of any additions that need to be made. Proofs are often missing important bibliographic information, such as volume and page numbers, because these have not yet been decided. The final published version of an article is often known as the version of record or VOR. This is the manuscript that most people will recognise as a journal article, as it will have been laid out in the house style of the publication and will contain complete bibliographic information, such as volume and issue number, as well as full details of the publication. At this point, you're probably wondering why any of this matters. As long as the work is made openly available, does it really make any difference which version it is that people see? As you might have guessed, it does indeed matter. As an author, it's understandable that you'll want the complete, corrected, and crucially the peer-reviewed final version to be available to your readers, but this is not always possible due to copyright restrictions. At the point where a journal agrees to publish an article, it will usually ask the author or authors to sign a publication agreement. Amongst other things, these agreements typically outline what will happen with the copyright in the article. Although some level of this might be retained by the author, it's common for academic publishers to ask for the copyright to be transferred to them, as they will be investing resources into editing, typesetting, and generally making the manuscript into a fully finished output. This may include things such as putting it into a certain font and format, assigning a volume and issue and adding their logo. The publishers want to protect this investment, which is why they often prohibit sharing the final stylized output, which looks like a finished journal article. Instead, many will allow the sharing of the author accepted manuscript. 
Although this version might not look like a finished article, it has been through peer review and any updates and crucially has exactly the same content as the finished product. As this video shows, identifying and sharing the correct version of a manuscript can sometimes be more complicated than it first appears. You should always check journal and funder requirements carefully to ensure you're sharing the correct version and ask your librarian if anything is unclear. <laughs> 